Hello and welcome back. It's been a while, uh, but let's walk uh, through the process of setting up uh, TouchGFX uh, with the new Cube IDE. First of all, we want to go to File and New and make a new STM32 project. I'm using uh, my disco board, my 746 disco board. So let's go to Board Selector here and just write 746. I'm selecting the first one and we have the first board here. Press Next and I can select a uh, project name i created a new workspace for this just press uh, i'll just say uh, touch test remember to select the c++ as a targeted language here that's very important otherwise the touch gfx will not work let's press finish and code generation can start do we want to initialize all peripherals in the default mode yes then all the uh, disco board function will work all right, uh, so uh, ST released the new version of the Cube IDE. Um, also, ST released the new version of the TouchGFX Designer. Um, they have fixed a few of the bugs, or a, few, a lot of the bugs that uh, were really annoying with the first version. So uh, the code generation should go a lot faster and much more easy in this time. So this is the, the hardware configuration pane that we see as the first or the first uh, the tab we see as the first thing and um, if I go to middleware here I can you can see that graphics is not enabled right now let's just go here graphics framework is disabled uh, let's select touch GFX and select the parallel interface using LTDC that is the only one available on this board anyway so hey okay so what you want to start with is go to platform settings here and you can see that the LCD reset pin is not defined. So we need to define this. I'm using uh, the development kit. If you are developing your own custom board, this is uh, essentially just a GPIO that you had configured as an output. So all uh, GPIO outputs are basically just put in this list here. So I'm selecting the PI12 LCD underscore disk here. And uh, that's basically it for the configuration. Uh, under parameter, uh, everything's set up. And touch GFX here. You need to point, uh, you need to find the executable full name here. Uh, mine is already pointing to, to the right one for the 4.12.3 version of touch GFX. If I press execute here, uh, touch GFX design is opening on my computer. And it says, uh, it opens on my other screen. It says that the project is generated using an old version for uh, 10, uh, for, uh, 10 0. Um, Do you want to update the project? And yes, we do want to that. Uh, it also suggests that you need to do a backup uh, beforehand, but the project is empty anyway. So, so this is a new Touch GFX designer, and thank you guys uh, for listening to a lot of the requests that uh, at least I had. Um, I really like the new version here. I haven't been using it uh, that much yet but uh, it really looks very nice here so I'm just gonna drag in a, a box here uh, resize it to background and set this color to let's just go for blue one this time um, on this screen here um, a really fast crash course into touch effects designer is that you have uh, graphical assets here uh, on the left uh, you have your screen um, overview so you can have multiple screens they are just laid here and all the assets that you have on each screen will get uh, under each under each other here and you can rearrange the uh, the order uh, or the the set height uh, on the screen by rearranging the items on each screen here uh, on the right hand side you'll have the properties for all the uh, the the different uh, items that you have on your screen and also you have interactions which I will get back to in a while um, so I'll just drag in a button real quick here on the blue background. I will create a new screen. Uh, I will do another box um, like this. I will set that background to I will do a yellow this time. Really harsh yellow, yes. And then go back and put another button here like this. Uh, on this, this is my screen too. You can see I can rearrange the the box. I will put that on the top. The the button is basically underneath uh, this the the box. So I'll just put the box on top or the button on top so you can see it. I will add an interaction. 
and say the way when a button is clicked there's only one button i will change screen to screen one i will have a sliding transition uh, east that's fine and on my screen one i will also add an interaction when a button is clicked there's still one button here so i cannot click anything else i will change screen to screen two and i'll have a sliding transition to the west so this is my code uh, in TouchGFX Designer, and I will just hit Generate Code. Okay, and uh, that is done. I can close down the project again. I will. Uh, I'm back in the Cube IDE now, and I will open this uh, core and the source folder. This is my main file, so I'll just go into here, and then I will uh, press uh, close on this. Now I will press um, build first. Then it will save, and then it will uh, generate the code for the, the hardware configuration uh, along. And it will start an integration or compile alongside the TouchGFX code. This will fail, um, if I'm right, because the, the TouchGFX designer has, has a simulator built in, and that code is also generated when you generate code in the TouchGFX designer. So we need to remove that from the system. So um, the reason I open this core here, and I will open main.cpp like this, and then I will close down the IOC file because we don't need that anymore. And it has some graphical glitches, so this is uh, slightly faster. Okay, so we go to middlewares and ST and TouchGFX. You can basically just follow the red crosses here. And when we go uh, end up uh, down here at the simulator, we can just right click, go to properties for this one. And then in the C slash C plus plus general, we can have we can select this exclose exclude resource from build. Press apply and close, and then I can collapse all this again. But we're not done yet. So in TouchGFX, uh, under generated, there is a folder called simulator. Right click, go to properties, and select exclude, apply and close. And then there we have the whole simulator folder. Uh, properties, exclude resource from build, apply and close. So now we can go to the, our project here and press build. And now we should succeed uh, in building. It takes a little while to, to get all the files uh, compiled, but when you're done with this, it will get much faster. It only needs to recompile the files that, uh, that we actually change. Unless, of course, you go back to the TouchGFX uh, project and change something, then you have to recompile. But yeah, when the project is set up, it's very fast to, to do changes and uh, we don't have the annoying problems as with the first problems uh, or the first versions where you only had one shot at doing the, the IOC configuration or the hardware configuration. So now it, uh, it finished, it's zero errors, one warning. Let's um, see, I can activate the camera. This is the board running uh, another sketch. Let's just hit the debug button here. Um, it actually asked me if I want to do, do a debug as the STM32 Cortex. If it doesn't do that, uh, then just right click here. This is only needed the first time. Right click and go to debug else, and then just select the STM32 Cortex application here. Uh, I get a, a box up here. Um, you don't need to change anything. Uh, if you go to debugger here, you can disable the verify flash download here. And when you get a little uh, further into programming here, you can add an external loader down here to add the, the Quad SPI uh, programming as well. But for now, we don't need to do anything. We just press OK. So it recompiles uh, the code, uh, just to make sure that everything is in order. Uh, waiting for the debug connection, it says down here. Uh, starting the download, the screen goes uh, blank or white. Uh, downloads and it verifies, and now it says download uh, verified successfully. Okay, so the code is ready to go. Um, we have a breakpoint at main, so we are here now. When I press the resume button, the program will start, let's see. And for a long time, nothing is happening. And I figured out, at least on my board, uh, this one, the ETH, uh, the Ethernet connection is initializing. So it's asking for, uh, or looking for DHCP uh, server and looking to get an IP address. So the board is booted right now. Um, it's running, but we have no touch screen, so there's nothing happening. So let's just uh, press terminate here, and let's go back to the code. So first of all, I will 
uh, comment out the if, uh, Ethernet initialization. Let's, if I do another uh, debug, let's just do that real quick. You can see how much uh, boot time that we shaved off the system just by doing this. Um, it starts almost instantaneously. I'm I'm very impressed with this uh, platform. So let's have a look. Verifying. Uh, download completed. Okay. So I'm pressing uh, resume now, and there we have it. Um, the screen that you see just before the the boot is, uh, I think, a leftover in the in the in the RAM or the uh, quad SPI. Um, so it's it's really fast at booting up. That was that was my point here. Okay. So we need to add the touchscreen controller, and to do that, you need to navigate to your uh, project folder. And I have in my at my user here, I have a, a folder called STM32 Cube IDE, and I can go into that. I have all my workspaces, and in my workspace here, I have my touch test pro project. So this is my project folder, the one we're working in right now. If I press Control N, I'll get a new uh, window here, and go back uh, to my user folder, and go back to the STM32 Cube. That's my repository uh, with all our STM. Uh, Cube MX code. So I find the 1.15, that's the, the newest version right now. Go to drivers and BSP. So I want to copy uh, the components folder and the STM32746G discovery folder. So I just press Control C and over in my project folder, I press Control V. Like this. In my uh, discovery folder here, I have a lot of files. The only ones I need are the uh, the ts.c and ts.h and also the discovery file itself. So I'll just delete everything else in here. So we have four files left like this. If I go back and go into the components folder, uh, these are the drivers for uh, for the specific hardware function. And the only one I need are the common folder and the ft5336 folder. So I'll just remove everything else just to make it easier like this okay just just close this and then i go back to my project right click and i say refresh you can also hit f5 so now uh, the project uh, recognizes that we have some folders in here we need to add these these folders are in the project but they're not recognized by the compiler yet so we need to go to properties and we need to go to uh, c slash c plus plus general and go to paths and symbols and then we go to source location and we press add folder. We press, uh, the, we choose the components folder and we choose the STM32746G discovery. So now uh, we are telling the compiler that it should look in these uh, folders as well. We go back to includes and then we can either select the C or C. Um, in the C folder, we want to add. Uh, in the workspace here, we want to add uh, the components, the common first, okay, and add the FT5336, like this. Under C++, we want to add, from the workspace, we want to add the STM32746G uh, discovery folder. So these are just the folders, uh, the Discovery folder goes to the C++ and the component and the touchscreen driver go to the C folder. Let's press apply and close. Uh, every time you see one of these, remember my decision. Just I, I mean, I personally like to click it because then I don't have to... to it, it wants to uh, rebuild the index for my all my files. I really want it to just do that automatically. So let's... Uh, you can see the index are running down here in the lower right corner. It's really fast. Okay. So now we have uh, the files available to the compiler. Um, in my touchgfx uh, folder, I have a folder called target. And in that folder target, we have the stm32f7 touch controller.cpp. If I go into that, um, this is the main uh, touch controller code. It's not very long, um, but it hooks up in, uh, hooks into a lot of the files that were just included. So in the init, uh, method here we want to uncomment uh, the t bsp underscore ts underscore init and in the sample touch method we want to uncomment the whole body basically here 
Um, these uh, functions that we reference here are not, or call here, are not known, so we not want to include that file, uh, the header file where this is known. And um, I just recently found out, and maybe this is obvious to you, maybe it's not. Um, so when the CubeMX generates codes for codes uh, or codes for you, uh, it says puts in a lot of these statements all around the code that it says user code begin and user code end. And I had a problem where I was changing code and generating, regenerating code and my, my stuff just kept disappearing. It turns out, and yes, it might, might be obvious in hindsight here, but everything that you put between these user code uh, begin and end tags is not deleted when you regenerate the, the or rerun the, the automatic code generator. So. It can help you uh, uh, save you a lot of time. I initially just thought they were put there for uh, posterity uh, to make it easier to, to read the code, but actually it has a function, so which is nice. Uh, I press uh, or type here include, uh, and I want to include the STM32746, and then press control space, uh, and I want to add the underscore t is the touch screen header file so um remember this is lowercase uh and then press Control s for saving and then uh let's just try to rebuild this it wants to rebuild a lot of stuff here um and just collapse this uh while we're at it and close all these the files. All right. So far, so good. All right. So the warnings is uh, is coming from the main that we're not using the 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 Ethernet. Uh, method anymore and also there's a warning about this uh, how this is written and that's that's a story for another day about how uh, how namings are used so let's just try to press debug here um, and let's see how it goes it recompiles the code much faster this time doesn't have to recompile everything um, the program, uh, uh, the debug is running. You can see the code is downloaded. Uh, the LED is flashing. Download verified successfully. And we are now at the main breakpoint. Uh, let's press resume here. Okay, so we got the blue screen. And if I'm ha logging here, then we can change to the yellow screen and go back. You can see the sliding animation as well. So it slides back and forth. Really nice. So now we have a uh, complete. Uh, touch GFX designer integration with the new uh, STM32 Cube IDE along with touchscreen. So now you can start using all the hardware interactions. And uh, this video uh, basically um, replaces my first video uh, in the playlist. So if you want to add another uh, Artos task or you want to add a serial port, um, I do other stuff. You can use those videos just as fine. Um, I hope you can use this as well. Um, yeah, thanks for watching.